Campaign signs sprout along tree-lined streets in New Jersey's 21st district, an affluent chunk of suburbs where voters have reliably sent Republicans to the state legislature since the early 1980s, with GOP Assembly incumbents John Bramnick and Nancy Munoz winning re-election for a decade or more as so-called moderates. Bramnick's been minority leader since 2012. I'm a common-sense Republican. I call the issues the way I see them and the district will decide whether or not John Bramnick is the common sense voice. I think we represent the constituents who live in our district. You know, if you look at the state of New Jersey, you know, we've heard that the most people are center right or center left. John and I are fighting to cut taxes, stop overdevelopment, and let you and your doctor make health care decisions, not the insurance companies. But the pair last won re-election by around 2,500 votes, and this time they're challenged on two sides, from the left by a couple of Democrats trying to keep last November's blue wave rolling, and from the far right, where Harris Pappas and Martin Marks are Donald Trump defenders running as conservative independents, targeting the incumbents they call rhinos, Republicans in name only. They've sided with Democrats, they've dismissed uh, if not disparaged uh, our sitting Republican president, Donald Trump, and his supporters, mm -hmm. and that irritated me. Marks, a dentist specializing in root canals, served for a dozen years as mayor and councilman in Scotch Plains. He faults Bramnick and Munoz for supporting a 23-cent increase in New Jersey's gas tax and for backing several gun control bills. Marks is deeply conservative and well aware registered Democrats edge out Republican voters 31 to 28 percent in the 21st district, with unaffiliated voters at 41 percent, so that he and Pappas could become sports Spoilers, splitting the Republican ticket. He'll live with the consequences. Ultimately, if the Democrats win, and they might, uh, I can't control that. The threat, though, of having someone siphon off Republican votes. I'm not the least bit worried about that. I've represented this district for a long time. But Mark says a group of Republican heavy hitters, including Senator Tom Kane Jr., State Party Chairman Doug Steinhardt, and National Committeeman Bill Palatucci, called him and Pappas into a secret meeting before the independents declared their candidacy. And they tried to talk us out of running. Uh, they're concerned that our candidacy could hurt the Republicans, uh, and they may be right, and they tried to talk us out of it and cajole us out of it. They're legitimately concerned, and there ought to be, but they didn't offer anything. Marx claims he and Pappas offered to step back, but only if New Jersey's Republican leaders promised to back Trump in 2020. Supporting the entire Republican ticket, which is going to be led by Donald Trump for re-election. And that's, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Trump. Right? Exactly. Exactly. They refused to, su to support him. When I called out President Trump on his rhetoric, some people didn't like it. I'm not apologizing to anybody. If the voters believe that my common sense and my positions are not what they want to represent the district, that's what they do in the voting booth. I think we'll hang out here for a little bit. Meanwhile, two Democrats are going door to door trying to galvanize the same blue wave voter support that carried Tom Malinowski to victory over legacy Republican Congressman Leonard Lance in the 7th Congressional District. The 7th encompasses much of the 21st, and attorney Lisa Mandelblatt originally ran for Congress here before deciding to back Malinowski. She disputes the incumbent's claim that they're moderates. Their voting records are not moderate. They voted in line with Chris Christie, denying women access to critical health care. By defunding Planned Parenthood, women weren't able to have life-saving cancer screenings, um, access to birth control. That's not moderate. You can say you're a moderate. You can give yourself labels. It's your actions that are going to speak for you. Stacy Gunderman chairs the new Providence Democratic Committee. The women won't label themselves Murphy Democrats after New Jersey's progressive governor. Both enjoy party support and endorsements from several progressive groups, including the gun control advocates Moms Demand Action and the Sierra Club. But they carve out caveats. For example, they back Murphy's 100% renewable energy by 2050 goal, but won't swear to a moratorium on fossil fuel plants and pipelines. Moratorium is a very hard thing to agree to mm -hmm. just because you never know if there might be some incidents that we didn't see that something needs. I hate that word moratorium because to me it, it just sort of takes away all negotiation. Mm -hmm. I think everything needs to be addressed on a, on a 
case-by-case -case basis. They won't immediately support Murphy's millionaire's tax either, and they'd renegotiate New Jersey's seriously underfunded state pension system with ideas that echo Democratic Senate President Steve Sweeney's path to progress. We made promises to folks that are already employed, and we need to live up to those promises. Mm. What we do with new employees, I think should everything should be on the table. Suburban women present a formidable voting block, and the recent furor over a so-called survivor shaming blurb on Bramnick's law firm website, condemned by his Democratic opponents and since removed, could cause a backlash. Pundits see gender as a key factor in this election. I'm not 100 percent sure that there's truly a blue wave but I certainly do think that there is a gender wave. I think that, that the vast majority of suburban women um, are terrified of Donald Trump and terrified of everything that he, he represents and talks about. And most likely they're gonna vote Democrat. So that's, uh, you know, I, th I think that's an important factor. So while Donald Trump isn't on the ballot, he's still wielding an outsized influence on this six-way race, whether it's direct or by default. In Westfield, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. Thank <music> you.